I get a lot of trainers and coaches come to me and they say, I want to do what you do. I want to, I want to train the trainers. I want to be a fitness leader. And I, I think that's awesome. Um, and I'm happy to help them in any way I can. And, and if you're, you think you're uh, interested in doing something like that, you know, putting yourself out there and training the trainers, uh, I hope this video helps you. So what I do when I'm in person with these individuals who say that, and I think that they're somebody who, who has potential to, to become that, because it's certainly not for everybody, I sit them down and I say, well, there's, there's a lot of things you've got to be ready for. I kind of give them the, so you want to be a leader kind of things. There's a lot of things that I found out that I was absolutely clueless about when um, I, before I had really got out there and taught, but I learned only after the fact, when you see the reactions and things. It's, it's kind of one of those things like where you talk to somebody and, you know, you, you think like, uh, oh, you just want to save the world. And then as soon as you start trying to save the world, you start realizing what you really can do and what you really can't do and you get a more realistic view of things. So whether you interpret what I'm about to say as, as negative or positive, I can promise you they're real. So I've written down a list here of several things, and um, I want to share them with you. So these are just things you have to be prepared for when you put yourself out there, meaning you teach, you write articles, you, you share your thoughts, whether it be evidence-based, experience-based, a little mix of both. So here you go. You have to be ready for... Uh, ad hominem attacks being thrown at you. So an ad hominem attack is when people attack um, you as an individual versus the information that you're providing. For instance, I'm not a huge bodybuilder guy. I could never get on a bodybuilding stage. Right? It's not what I personally am, am training to do. However, I've helped plenty of bodybuilders train. I write for bodybuilding magazines and several bodybuilding articles. So even if the information is really good and there's good science in there about hypertrophy training and it's practical and it's well delivered, you'll get plenty of people who just go, well, look at you. You're only 175 pounds. You couldn't get on stage. I've got, you know, monster guns. I'm smarter than you. Okay. Horrible logic, but you have to be prepared for that. And if somebody's going to use poor logic in an argument, it doesn't make sense to you to try to... In uh, school them on what is logical because they've already displayed it. They don't have uh, the comprehension of what good logic is. But you have to be prepared for that. Um, you have to be for people be prepared for people to try to take the opportunity of you talking about what you do and just trying to talk about what they do because we all kind of like to hear ourselves talk. Which I got to get that's the next point in a, in a bit. So you have to be diplomatic and just kind of stop that and say, hey. Um, I'd love to talk shop with you when we, we could go out to lunch or have a drink or whatnot. But at this point, this is my thread, and I'm here to try to help people, and they're here because they're curious about what I do. So if you want to talk about what you do, you have your own Facebook page, start your own YouTube page, or you go write an article. I would, one of my favorite things to tell people is I go, that would be a great article for you to write. <laughs> but, you know, this is me sharing stuff. So you get that a lot. You just have to be diplomatic about it. Um, I mentioned that you know a lot of people like to hear themselves talk. Well, if you want to actually stand up in front of people and give workshops or even do YouTube videos just like I'm doing, you have to, to a point, enjoy hearing yourself talk. I don't know anybody who's a, a leader in anything who can stand up for two and a half hours and just talk and give a lecture, or workshop, whatever, who doesn't enjoy hearing themselves talk. I absolutely enjoy hearing myself, hearing myself talk. And you have to have that quality, too, if you want to do those sorts of things. Now, that doesn't mean that you're arrogant or you're cocky. It just means that you're confident and you um, have confidence in what you do. No different than a, probably a quarterback enjoys watching, vid watching videotape of themselves throwing um, touchdown passes. So there's nothing negative about that. So you also have to be ready for people to look at you and look at themselves in a double standard. What they'll do, and this is a natural psychology thing, is they'll always try to upgrade their strengths. They'll emphasize their strength while emphasizing, while balancing that against your weaknesses. Or, in a, let me put it another way, where along the lines is they'll, they want to always try to look, many people will try to look at you as if you always have the most negative intention. Like, oh, the only reason you're doing this is just to get attention, or just to be a contrarian, um, or just to sell a product, or just to do it. Meanwhile, you're doing it absolutely free, or they're getting it for free. Yet, yet, they, they'll put out their assertions because they disagree with you. They said it's because they disagree with you. 
and they act like they're only doing it because they want to get the truth out. So they want to do it because they want to get the truth, but you, you want to do it because you have these alternate intentions that are evil and conniving and selfish and all about the money and whatever, and people will do this all the time. Um, and this kind of brings me to a, a point of all this. A lot of people, when they get into situations where they put themselves out there and they see the back and forth, you know, some people like it, some people don't like it. Oh, I can't win. You hear that? Like, can't. Win. Let me tell you, if you want to be a leader, the one thing you have to accept that's pretty much the takeaway from all this is you're not supposed to win. Let me give you a, a great, quick little uh, example. I've done some of these YouTube videos where I'm driving in the car, and and looking at the at the phone is no different than if I'm looking at somebody next to me, or I'm not staring at them while I'm driving. I'm driving, I look over, I come back. Just no different than when you're looking at someone who's in the passenger seat and you're driving, having a conversation. Every once in a while, you glimpse over. So I've had countless trainers tell me they're like, I love those driving with Nick videos. Those are awesome. You do more of those. They're really really cool. I just like the setup, and they're very intimate and whatever. Okay, cool. And then I just get an email recently from somebody who's basically dinging me. They're like, I can't believe you're doing that driving. We just had people die texting and driving. That's ridiculous. You're an idiot. And I'm thinking, well, there you go. So some people think it's it's really cool. Other people are calling me an idiot and they're saying I'm a danger to um, the rest of the people on, on the road. You can't win. You're not supposed to win. So continuing on with that, uh, a sense of entitlement. You know... It amazes me how many people think that I owe them something because they read my work, which I put all the time and effort to check the references and spend all the thousands of dollars and hundreds of hours cultivating and learning, that now I owe them more of an expl explanation for something that they got for free. Now, I'm not saying that they don't have the right to complain or disagree. You absolutely have the right. But you're not entitled to to get anything more from me, the author. I've already done my part. I've already taken the time. I've shared my thoughts. I owe you nothing. And I say that because if you want to be a leader and you put yourself out there, don't feed into this sense of entitlement. I've made the mistake of feeding into it several times, and I cannot stand a sense of entitlement. And it's my fault because I, I gave it credence. So you'll, you'll get a lot of people who, who think that you owe them something. They become entitled. So um, this is a big one. Uh, people will, you have to be prepared for people to really, to misinterpret you, put words in your mouth, to straw man argument you. Um, well, straw man is basically where you construct a, an argument that's easier to, to dismantle than what the, the actual person made. Let me give you a practical example. Right now it's pretty well known if you follow the research that postural factors aren't really reliable indicators of back pain, um, uh, linked to back pain, whether you know whether you uh, have back pain or potential for getting it, there's really not much of a link, despite uh, popular misconception that there is. Okay, so you get on there and say that. Well, hey, the research doesn't support that anterior pelvic tilt is a cause of back pain or puts you at a risk of eventually getting back pain any easier than someone doesn't have the tilt. So inevitably, someone will throw the straw man back. Well, you're saying that posture and biomechanics doesn't matter, and that's just ignorant. Why do we care? Why do we even have form? No, that's not what I said. I didn't say posture and biomechanics doesn't matter. I just said that the research doesn't have a direct link to back pain. There's no causal, direct causal connect, uh, cause and effect right there. We can't make blanket statements. So that's what I mean by they'll misinterpret you and they'll construct their whole argument um, based off of that and then go on telling all their trainer friends that you're an idiot because you think this and that's not what you said. And furthermore, what you have to be prepared for is that People, because we all like drama, think about the shows you watch on TV, and they're all very, very dramatic, they're always l looking to ask questions that bait you into kind of like a coach versus coach kind of thing. I always get asked, what do you think of CrossFit? What do you think of this person, This the way this person coaches, that person coaches? What I think about these other things is is no bearing on anything. They're just my, uh, my opinion, and we all know you know, what they say about opinions. What's important is what the evidence says, and I can only share my approach, why I do things, right? Whether it lines up with that or not. And even if you avoid those things, here's the other thing you got to be prepared for. Even if you avoid feeding into that, what happens is it gets interpreted as that. So, for instance, by me saying, well, I don't really follow the 
the whole link between anterior pelvic tilt and low back pain, I don't get caught up with that stuff for lack of evidence that I should. Here's the evidence. There's lots of research that shows a, a lack of a link. This gets interpreted as Nick is now saying that insert name of any physical therapist or coach who does teach this is now stupid or doesn't know what they're talking about or is trash talking. That's what happens. And it comes back to me all the time. Did you hear what so-and-so said about you and what you said about so-and-so? I heard what you said about so-and-so. I go, I never said that. So whenever you hear, this is the thing you got to be, all these things you have to be prepared for. And just things to know as well. Uh, when you ever hear, you know, oh, so-and-so coach said this, make sure you go to that trainer and coach or go to their workshops and make sure that's what they said. Because the way our brains work, we like black and white. So if somebody, for instance, uses the word likely or unlikely, it's less likely that this exercise will help vertical jump. I'm just coming up with something. A lot of people will interpret that black and white. We don't like likely and unlikely. That's too unsure. We like, you know, black or white, good, bad. So uh, so-and-so said that that exercise doesn't work for vertical jump. It's not, what, that's not what was said, but you get interpreted that way. So you have to be prepared for these things. Some of you have to accept. Some of them you have to just do a better continually. I'm going to say do a better job of teaching because it's not doing a better job of teaching. You've done that. Um, is you have to continually deal with the same misinterpretations. I got a little list here. So other things that people will do, you have to be prepared for. They will not appreciate they won't put themselves in your shoes that you are talking to maybe a, giving generalities. So, for instance, let's say you're on Facebook and you've got 5,000 followers, right? Some are fitness enthusiasts, others are athletes, others are fitness professionals, and a whole bunch of other people in between. And you throw something out there about, you know, that's very, very general. Let's say, like, if you're going for hypertrophy, um, you, you don't want to be lifting necessarily doing one RMs and trying to impress people with the weight you lift. It's more about form and creating metabolic stress and tension and, you know, all the things Brad Schoenfeld talks about. So inevitably, you're going to get someone who ignores the fact that you're talking to 10,000 people or 5,000 people or, or trying to give something very general. And they'll go, well, if, you, if your secondary goal is powerlifting or if you're training for a powerlifting event or football or whatever, it's like, yeah, man, like, I know, but I'm, that's talking to like maybe three people in this whole thing. So, you know, and you say deadlifts are good. Well, I could tell you not good for people who don't have legs. But this is the type of argument that you get. So you have to be prepared for that kind of stuff. And you could say it's frustrating. And uh, to me, I just kind of laugh it off because really what it is is people aren't putting themselves in your shoes. And if you want to be a leader, you have to be prepared to put yourself first in uh, people who are currently leading, currently teaching in their shoes, so you can better understand this stuff. So, last thing I'll get to with this is, you have to be, understand that, because of all these things that I've covered, you know, a lot of people tend to want to empower themselves, you know, they may look at it as if you're trying to think that you're that you're big time because you're writing these things. So they can't wait to, to ding you. And I, I'm, I love it when people bust me on stuff. I mean, you can't be an expert on everything. And training is so many disciplines and so many aspects of science that there's always somebody out there who knows more about a certain thing than I do. So I'm happy when people bust me on certain things. I'll be the first one to say I was wrong and shake your hand or give you the thumbs up or hug or whatever for, um, for setting me straight because I want my beliefs to lawfully al align with reality. I don't want to have, I want to have as little false beliefs as possible. But that being said, sometimes the intention is not to, to teach you what is right. Is that, you know, people want to get the impression that, again, you have these ulterior motives, so they want to try to, to show you up or whatever or inflate themselves because they, you know, desire to be on the site that you have written for or to be in the position that you're in. And that's cool. That's what we should do. We all should aspire to do things like that. But what can happen with that is, you know, you might spend eight hours putting together an article and formulating your references and connecting A to B and showing how multiple lines of inquiry are lining up and spend a lot of time and, uh, you know, mental energy 
and the information that you've provided has cost you thousands of dollars to acquire and hundreds of hours of travel and learning and putting the pieces of the puzzle together and you spend time trying to coordinate it into a nice package that's easy, easily understandable and practical and all this stuff and man someone will take like one little sentence that you said you misspelled something or you you know sometimes it's silly like that and they will just crucify you on the comment sections for these little things and they just act like they forgot about everything else that you spent time for because that becomes the big thing let me give you a great example in in politics we all remember uh... the mitt romney thing where he says binders full of women right so whether you republican democrat agree disagree this is not about politics i'm not getting into that at all but just keep in mind that all our candidates spend hours and hours working on their speeches um, practicing things, trying to, to, they put their life there, taking time away from their family, and imagine how it feels to be somebody in Romney's situation, um, whether you agree with the, his policies or not, who spent that much time and effort, who's on TV, um, and is talking for an hour and a half, and says one thing that we all know he didn't mean it that way, and that was what was remembered from his speech. All that time and effort he put into it, and all that mental energy and that's what gets remembered and he gets crucified for you know still gets crucified every once in a while for that imagine how that would feel to be you imagine how you would feel would that not make you hold animosity towards the people that you're trying to communicate with when you think well no matter what i say you know i put all this time and effort no matter what i say they're going to find the one little error i'm going to make and it's likely i'm going to make an error if i'm up there for an hour or two hours or write two thousand words so why don't i, I just screw it. i'm just going to say whatever i want that can really helps you explain why you see some people who have been out there for a long time start to be, or older folks, start to become more bitter, less patient, um, more abrupt, because this has happened to them so many times. Now, I'm not saying that's okay. I personally do my best not to get caught up in those things. But these are things that you have to, so bringing things full circle here, these are things that you have to be prepared are going to happen, and you have to understand how will you react to them. Will you let it get the best of you? Will you feed into it and become like that old cranky person or that whatever? Or will you just be the rock and just continue on? That's up to you. Regardless, these are things that you have to be prepared for you because if you want to be a leader, these are things that you have to know and they will happen to you, I can promise you. So final repeat of the message, the summary of all this is that don't think that you can win if you're getting into this game because you want to help this and you want to clarify this and whatnot, I can promise you, not supposed to win. You can never win. You can help. You can help, but you can't win.